interview, if you saw the whole interview, which I hope people will, he really did a great job at defending all of the things okay, that were Martha, happening. Okay, Martha, we've got to move on. Okay. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's talk about Mexico now because I know a lot of your listeners are weighing in on this and will be tomorrow, especially sure. after nine bodies found in shallow graves. They're close to the border. It is escalating. And I said this last night and I've been saying it, people who live, you know, middle America, north, you know, up north, if they think it's not going to come to their town, then they are absolutely wrong. It's coming. Yeah. It, it's well, coming. They, they've been talking about this kind of violence on the border for a long time, but it has escalated dramatically. And I have to tell you, it's, it is scary because it is a war there below the border. And uh, Mexico's government, I, I got to take my hat off to Calderon to fighting this, President Calderon for fighting this, but it is a war down below there. Mm -hmm. And you talk, the teenagers who are losing their lives and also becoming killers and also selling drugs here. Warren, what are they saying uh, on your show? Well, well, this hits directly to my listeners because when, when the, the Mexican population comes to America, they can't afford to live in the middle class areas. They're living in the poor, rural, and urban areas, so they're having these wars. Th these killings have been going on in black communities for a while, and, and one of the things that we need to do mm -hmm. as a community is talk about how black and brown and everybody in this country can come together because we may have come here on different ships, but right now we're all in the same Okay, boat. real quickly, we need to talk about, uh, this was big news at the end of the week, the NAACP lawsuit, class action lawsuit against against two lenders. Warren. Well, I, I'm glad that they filed the suit. However, I, I, I think all they needed to do was pull the comps to be able to see if the suit has merit or not. But I am glad that they filed the suit because everybody wanted to blame the lenders for mm -hmm. loaning to minorities and other people for what happened in this housing uh, crisis. But in reality, only 5% uh, of African Americans are homeowners in this country. So it, it's some other stuff that's going on why this mortgage industry well, and hit the, fact the way that, it did. And, and what has to be done in addition to the suit is that we've got to do a better job in America, black, white, or brown and talking about what it is to own a home and what's involved. It's not just signing on the dotted line and paying the mortgage every month. There's a lot more involved in owning a home, and it takes time and effort to get there. But the and banks did a, a lot of this, too, because they gave mortgages without proven yeah, income. And that but it's a lot of homework that you have to do, too, as well, Warren and Martha, before you buy a home That's and while right. you're doing it That's and while exactly you're sitting right. there at the table at the closing and what have you. It's not ending. Once you sign those papers, though, it is yours to keep and That's to right. pay for it. Thank you both. Thanks, Thank guys. You guys. All right, we've been talking about the outrage over AIG bonuses. We're going to cut to the chase and find out what Americans are saying all around the country about this. Our email boxes here at CNN were full. Uh, you should see, hear some of the voicemails that I got on the left. Uh, talk radio host Warren Ballantyne on, Ballantyne on the right. Uh, radio host Michael Medved. Thank you both. Warren, I'm going to start with you. All right. This ranks right at the top of the most nasty, the nastiest hate-filled emails I got, not towards me, but about what was happening. What about you, people calling into your show? Well, I got to tell you, my listeners were livid about this AIG bailout. I mean, my listeners are, are hurting. America's needs jobs. You're having all these companies getting bailed out. And, and look, let's just be honest. If you want to find the real criminals in this country, you go to Wall Street and you see what they're doing for their buddies and their friends. And Don, what's even more frightening is we're not getting the truth. We're, we keep hearing about this, the, the AIG bailout, but what about the Federal Reserve, which isn't even owned by the United States of America? And so nobody's talking about these things, and all the regular people are hurting, and nobody's saying anything about it. Well, I got an interesting uh, email, um, at, at Michael, from a, a viewer here who said, you know, we hear about all of these people who are supposedly at the bottom uh, of the economic scale and that are drained on the system and the economy, when the folks at the very top were the ones who were getting away with taking most of the money, most of the money out of the economy, and we never even knew about it. Well, and I think the outrage really is directed not just at the people on Wall Street, but the people on Capitol Hill, because there is evidence that the Obama administration knew about this, that they pressured Senator Dodd to change the bill to allow these bonuses. And it's a very, very big problem for President Obama, because he is now splitting with Democrats on several issues, the most important of them being this deficit. And you talk about something that dwarfs the AIG uh, bonuses. I mean, when, when this deficit is different, according to the Congressional Budget Office, by about a trillion dollars mm -hmm. from what President Obama has claimed. And there's no way that we can afford this. And people in the Democratic side are talking about America going bankrupt. This is very serious and, and stuff. And Warren, you know, Michael has a, has a point here because there is some evidence, and we have it on tape, of Timothy Geithner saying, I didn't know until March 10th. And then, but he was questioned about it on March 3rd. How much, how much leeway are your listeners, Warren, giving the administration? Because it appears 
that there's some miscommunication here or someone is just not telling the truth? Well, I think we all have to give the president and, and the administration a little bit of leeway because of, of the, what, he, what he inherited when he came into office. But I will say this. If it comes to light that, he, that this administration did pressure Senator Dodd to put this amendment in here to allow this loophole, I think not only my listeners but all of Americans are going to be very disappointed and very upset because too many people are hurting. And, and, you know, it appears when we heard uh, about the reaction uh, from lawmakers, especially from Congress, it looks like everyone jumped on. Uh, is this a mob mentality? Is this posturing? Warren, or is this, or should these people be concerned about what their constituents are, are saying? Look, I just hope the listeners and the viewers do not get bamboozled by these politicians. Look, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. As far as I'm concerned with the Congress, it's a talented 10 percent. The rest of them are up there just trying to get a paycheck. I'm just going to be honest with you. I think we should get rid of all of them, keep that talented 10, and get regular American citizens up there who understand what we're going through right now and get somebody that's going to fight for us. Hey, you Michael, know, Warren, I, I largely agree with you, but it's not that they're concerned about a paycheck. They're paying concerned about a contribution check. They're yeah, concerned yeah, about an right. earmark. <laughs> you're right. They're concerned <laughs> about, about spending public money to advance their own political future. And the mm -hmm. American people are sick of it. This is not a Republican issue. It's not a Democratic issue. People are extraordinarily angry. And I think they're beginning to be disappointed by President Obama because things were supposed to be different. Mm -hmm. Things were supposed to be new and fresh and hopeful and full of change. It doesn't look Mike, like change. That's going yeah, yeah. to have to be Mike, the last Mike, word here, Warren. You've got to give him time, Warren, Mike. He hasn't been in there 100 days yet. Right. Time. Warren Ballantyne and Michael Medved, thank Thanks, you Don. both very much uh, for joining you. us tonight here on CNN. We're going to get back to what they're saying on Twitter and on Facebook and all those things. So Warren and Martha, what's on tap of the radio? Those are our radio hosts tonight. There they are. Warren Ballantyne, Martha Zoller. Martha, let me start with you. Sure. My conversation with Michael Steele. Uh, he seems to be pretty serious about reaching out. And, you know, I've been doing this a lot because uh, people think that African-Americans uh, and Hispanics, at least in the last election, were tied to the Democratic Party. He says, we've got to reach out. But he says he doesn't want to change any of the core values. How do you do that without any compromise? By communicating it better. I mean, that's what you do. And you do like Ronald Reagan did. Ronald Reagan reached out to the masses instead of just to the base. I think where the Republican Party, and to the Democrats to some extent, have made mistakes over the last number of years has been that they think they've got to shore up their base first rather than reaching out. And I, and I like what Michael Steele had to say. I've been a strong supporter for years. I mean, he has been, you know, a very strong communicator of the message. So the, the, the issues, Warren, that are important to the Republican Party, you know, um, abortion, uh, uh, gay marriage, no gay marriage, uh, guns, those sorts of things. Um, are they selling something that African Americans would want to buy? I think the Republicans need to do a couple of things. First, I think they need to show African Americans that, you know what, 90% of African Americans kind of have the core values of Republicans. Mm -hmm. They really do if you look at, at, at abortion to gay right issues to other issues. But more importantly, they have to go back and get to know the people. I mean, even with radio and television, you have some talented people who are running these companies, but they're so far up that they don't really understand what the people want. And that's the same thing that's going on with the Republican Party. They have, you know, if I was advising them or I was in the Republican Party, I would tell them, look, go to these major cities. Let's take Chicago, for example. It's been Democratic my whole life. The schools aren't any better. The crime rate is still yeah. up. Why not give us, the Republicans, a shot? Well, he said, they need to take it to the people. I think he says that, you know, th that's what they're doing. He said the Republican Party actually is a party of Lincoln and Douglas. Abolitionists went to the Republican Party, and that's why they started it, because it's a party of the people. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on. We're going to talk about something else. Uh, I want to go and talk about the Dallas story uh, with the police officer and the football player. Uh, Warren, I know that your listeners were, they were talking about it. Did you have this on Friday? Yeah, I did. And what were they saying about it? Because when you listen to it, it's like, oh my gosh, how insensitive can you be? Why can't you just escort them to the hospital and figure out if what they're saying is true? Well, well, you know, Friday was very interesting for me because a lot of my listeners wanted to jump to race on this. And I, and I purposely steered them away from that because this isn't about race. This is about training. We have to educate our officers the right way. And, and my suggestion to everybody, to all the police forces out here, we need to have town hall meetings with the officers so they can become more... Uh, familiar with the, the areas they are okay. actually policing to be able to work with the community. Uh, Martha, did you think that this was a case of profiling or did it was just a rude officer? Well, I mean, I hope it was just a rude officer, but I can't deny that profiling goes on. I don't know that it's just among black men. I think younger men in general 
get profiled more than, say, a middle-aged uh, woman like myself. Uh, I think you're not middle-aged. You're so uh, young. Go thank ahead. you, thank you. But you know what I'm saying <laughs> is that is that I think young 